So how I view this problem, which is uh, potentially becoming more prevalent in the industry, is dividing it into three logical buckets. Bucket number one is the most common and prevalent problem of communication and GPS jamming. Uh, second is the bucket which is more sophisticated and in my view not as straightforward and prevalent is the problem and perception of hacking and spoofing. And third is the bucket and topic of the concern around the country of origin of these components, some of the critical components and the effect they have on the first two buckets. So starting with the third bucket first, while the country of origin of critical components is important and the main risk it poses is providing backdoor entries or compromise security of the equipment, uh, which can be an area of concern, the main approach to control this is by supply chain tra transparency and auditing approaches of critical components which handle data or control of the equipment under concern. Now, if there is a compromise country of origin, it can cause potential compromise in bucket two, which is for hacking or spoofing attempts. And hence, as a precaution one, the country of origin control of critical components is an important activity for controlling any hacking or spoofing related attempts. But in addition to that, appropriate technology measures for components from any location are still mandatory. These security approaches include appropriate level of encryption and other security measures which ensure that no unauthorized party gets any access onto the equipment or its data. The first bucket, which is the bucket of jamming, in my opinion, is the most prevalent and the biggest problem in actual operations. And hence, disruption of uh, drone and other communication-based equipment operation can happen either because of friendly jamming, a friendly agency using a jammer without knowledge of uh, the equipment's operation, or uh, uh, adversary taking, making use of very affordable, commercially available jamming technologies to disrupt the operation of the equipment under concern. And the main strategy which avoids jamming related problems is not as much the country of origin, while that should definitely be ensured based on the uh, supply chain transparency. But the main solution required for resisting jamming are technology-based solutions. These technology-based solutions should be able to resist jamming attempts by uh, concepts like frequency hopping and uh, appropriate channel selection technologies so that the equipment intelligently chooses the best frequency and channel on which the communication can happen. Or it could choose navigational technologies which are not dependent exclusively on availability of GPS so that even if GPS gets jammed, the safety and the recovery of the equipment is not compromised and it could be recovered by it. I think uh, the other reason why the prevalence of jamming related operational disruption has increased significantly is because the currently procured uh, drone technologies in their requirement specifications never captured the requirement to survive or operate in RF contested environments. And hence, a large part of the fleet today uh, may not be building in the technology to continue operation in such environments. The need of the art would be to update all current and future procurement uh, approaches with the incorporation of these technologies as a minimum requirement for any drone technology to be supplied in the future. This is an important part and we have been pushing this messaging through a concept uh, we call future-proofing the forces. So the f activity of future-proofing the forces against such problems can only occur if today the requirements being sought by the user uh, could incorporate them as a minimum requirement, which will become a foundation for 
uh, all new drone technologies to have a much better resistance to such jamming uh, attacks. In fact, uh, we as a drone industry would also be willing to offer appropriate technology upgrades on existing fleet to make them more tolerant to any such environments than what they are because today's uh, deployed technology may be based on what was envisaged two, three, four or five years back and hence there is probably a merit and opportunity to upgrade those acquired technologies to the latest uh, solutions available today which the industry is the industry is completely willing to enable uh, in the fastest manner.